Good morning. This month, for the month of May, we've been focusing on the call of God. Um, we have the pleasure of being able to kind of put our bags down and linger in this book called Acts. We will be here all month. And today you have heard the words, the call to good works is your sermonic theme last week. We talked about another call, but today we're talking about the call to good works. One mom who is known as a, is a well-known preacher and an author was riding on a plane with her son, the youngest of three, called Jude some years back. They were sitting right near the wing of the airplane. They were looking out. Her son, consumed with a look of wonderment on his face, asked, how do they get that thing to stick on the side of the plane? And his mom replied, I don't know. But you know what? You can ask your Uncle Vaughn. He works in aviation. Uncle Vaughn will be able to explain this no problem. Taking it one step further and seeing it as a mom, as a teachable moment, she says to her son, you know, when you grow up, you can be anything you want to be. If you want to be a doctor, you can be a doctor. If you want to be a lawyer, you can be a lawyer. If you want to be a singer, you can be a singer. You have so much potential, my son. You can even work in aviation like your uncle. Jude looks back at his mom and says, Mom, I don't want to do what Uncle Vaughn does. I want to do what you do when I grow up. You know that moment as a parent when your child does something that touches your heart? It's in this moment where her heart feels warm that her son would like to take up the occupation that she, would, that she is doing. And so she decides to push it a little bit further, wondering what aspect of ministry he might be talking about. Is he talking about caring for the sick? Is he talking about praying with people? Is he talking about sharing the good news? Or maybe he's even talking about writing books. He looks back at her and says, Mom, I want to do nothing when I grow up, just like you. You do nothing all day, every day. She was taken aback, just a tad bit aback. So the full-time mom preacher, New York bestseller author says, Jude, do you see those clean clothes that you have on today? How do you think you got them? And Jay looks at her and says, oh, that's just stuff that moms do. She says, you eat home-cooked meals pretty regularly, son. How do you think you got them? How do you think those meals got cooked? And she tries to explain to him what she does for a living. And Jude just says, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're just sitting behind a computer all day, every day, doing nothing. Often a mother's work, and when they do it well, can almost appear to be no work at all. Somebody ought to just say amen. It is often not a job that is valued as much as it should be. How do clothes get clean? or transportation to various extracurricular activities, or food, or quality time, or help with homework and projects, or birthdays and tooth fairies. This week I was listening to Cela Marley. Cela Marley is the daughter of Lauren Hill. She does a two hour video on relationships and her parents. On the one hand, she's lamenting on the physical punishment and the absence of her father. But on the other hand, as a young adult, she also says, I don't know how my mom did it, raising four kids and supporting the nuclear family and the extended family while being under extreme pressure by society. This thing called parenting done well takes an extreme amount of time, energy, and prayers. And for those people who give themselves to molding and shaping another little human being, we say happy parenting day. I want to talk to you guys today about good works, with parenting definitely being on the list. In fact, if this were a Family Feud episode and the question was, what are the top seven things that are good works? I think parenting would make the list. In fact, let's just get on over to the biblical text that was read by Pam. Here we have Tabitha, also known as Dorcas, who is known in her community for doing good works. 
She is a disciple, and she's the only female disciple named in the biblical text. Tabitha fashions her life after Jesus and is dedicated to widows primarily. She is loyal to her good works. Scholars believe she was well off, and whether a widow or not, she cared for widows just the same, and they claimed her as their own. We can see Christ reflected in Tabitha's holding of her resources with open hands, pouring herself out into the lives of these widows, sharing not just her material resources and skills, but her time and attention. Simon Wells said, attention is the rarest and purest form of generosity. You know, like when someone really takes time to hear what you have to say, to breathe in your essence, to not rush you, that generosity. Tabitha gives her attention, caring for those vulnerable women, deeply counting them as friends and sisters and nourishing their lives with her own until her own life is given back to God. Tabitha was known for her good works in Joppa and to designate a group of people, but maybe she wasn't known outside of Joppa. Not all the time will people see our good works. Not all the time will your good works be known. The Bible encourages us not to do good works to be seen, not to do good works to prove anything to anyone. We do good works because out of the abundance of mercy and grace that have been shown to us daily, we want to share with others. We do good works because of the love that has been deposited in us. Yesterday, Paul Dietrich was sharing, growing up, he was exposed to this spirit of inclusion and helping others out. I don't believe that Paul is the only one. Somewhere along the way, some part of the gospel captivated us and even touched our lives. For me, it was Jesus warning folks to not judge others. I love those passages. For you, it might have been A or U, B or U, C. And here we have Tabitha, definitely touched by Jesus' story. So much so she gives her life over to good works. I have seen some of you get called over to good works. Some of us, like Tabitha, even devote our lives to good works. What is a good work? I'm so glad you asked. We know that helping widows and parenting are good works. We learned yesterday as we observe Asian American Awareness Month that during World War II, Japanese were taken from their homes because they looked like the enemy. And yet mainly Japanese Americans would go, and yet men, Japanese men, would continue to work. They would go to fight in World War II. The Japanese community would continue to work hard in concentration camps. We also remember in World War II that African Americans worked hard to be present in the war. We remember the Tuskegee Airmen, communities that have been looked on suspiciously, doing good works in spite of racism and bigotry. Black Lives Matter, doing good works. Harvey Milk, doing good works. The women's suffrage movement, doing a good work. The abolitionist movement, doing a good work. The ACLU, doing a good work. GoFundMe, <laughs> doing a good work. The minority civic groups and countercultural faith communities that speak up when bad things are done to groups of people, even when it means they might suffer doing good works. The news today is often dismal and cynical. The war in Ukraine, every time I tag in, violence elsewhere is still crippling. And all of that can get into our psyche, but there are always people that can go against the grain of treating others inhumane. There are always others remembering our individual and our collective power. We can always do good works. Long after our presence, long after people forget our words, our works speak, and they hold up a light for those that come after us. Willie Parker, Dr. Willie Parker, is a former Chicago native. He is also a doctor. He is also a Christian with deep convictions about his faith. 
He was raised as a conservative Christian and went off to college with his Jesus button on his clothes. Every Saturday, he would spread the good news. He loved the principles of Gandhi and after school began working in a food pantry. He was an obstetrician by profession and began to notice a pattern in his practice of women with reproductive issues coming to his practice. He remembered his family and he remembered his grandmother who died in childbirth. He says he had a come to Jesus moment and decided his good works would be serving women in their time of need. Good works will find you. He quit his nice paying job and decided to become a full-time abortionist. He flies south weekly to perform abortions in states where they cannot find doctors. He knows he's risking his life. He has received several death threats and the right have even published his home address to people. He knows what he's getting into. The protesters say they're opposed to abortion because they're Christian, Parker says. He says it's hard for them to accept that I do abortions because I am a Christian as well. This week, a normal trip to school, which usually takes about 30 to 40 minutes, took two hours. We soon learned that there had been a tragic accident on Lakeshore Drive with the Chicago public transportation bus. At the busiest time of travel, they were rerouting all the traffic off of Lakeshore Drive. <clears throat> it's part of my job as an Uber service for kids to experience a lot of traffic jams <laughs> in my life. I'm always stuck in traffic. I'm always waiting somewhere. But I tell you, that day it hit me. I had an epiphany. I took out my knitting project and said, from now on, I'm going to keep this in my lap. And when I get in these jams, I'm going to pray and knit. But there is one space I never have seen a traffic jam. No overflow of lots and lots of people, and that's doing good works. You will never have to complete, compete when you are doing good works. You have to compete for celebrity and fame and all that stuff. There's always plenty of space to answer the call of good works. No one will get jealous when you're trying to do good works. No one will try to take your spot when you're doing good works. Nobody will say it wasn't fair when you're doing good works. Plenty of space to love up on people, serve and advocate for those who got dealt a bad set of cards. Plenty of room during World War II to speak up for the Japanese. There's plenty of room to speak up for African Americans in terms of America's history. Plenty of room to advocate for the LGBTQI. Plenty of room. Plenty of room to fight for better mental health services even as we step outside the church and see people talking to other people that we do not see. Plenty of room. Plenty of room to advocate for programs and laws to reduce gun violence. Plenty of room. Plenty of room to adopt and provide home for kids. Since we are so pro-life, after all, there's plenty of room. There has and will always be plenty of room for good works. Never overcrowding, never a jam. No traffic jams over here. The call to good works is one of the best calls you can get. The early church would dedicate themselves to good works. They were so serious about laying a foundation of caring for others. Tabitha got the call. Paul's dad in the Methodist church, hopefully the UCC and Presbyterian too, got the call to good works. Dr. Willie Parker got the call. Many of us are the beneficiaries of somebody's good work. Tabitha's work was so appreciated that when she died, the widows did what? They lamented. They cried. Somebody sent for Peter, and Peter came and said, not yet. We need you and your good works, even when others may think it looked like you ain't doing nothing at all. Your good works matter. Our ancestors of the faith and even witnesses now show us on this path of life that our good works are needed all the way from the steps of the White House to United Church of Hyde Park. You can get tired and rest. You can get weary. You can get mad with people. You can shut your door for a minute. You can take a season off. You can go on vacation. But let us always return to good works. 
find our way back to doing good works. You may ignore a lot of other phone calls, but let us always try not to ignore the call, the call to do good works. Amen.